We'll call the meeting back to order. First thing on the agenda is citizens' time. Is there nobody signed up, Kelly, or do you know? Nobody signed up for citizens' time. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak during citizens' time? I'll close citizens' time. Uh, discussion regarding special election, Ms. Sandy Elswick. Okay. Okay. Um, Chairman, I'll, I can lead in. Yeah, because we need a, an introduction to that. Yeah. If you, um, as everyone is aware by now, uh, recent resignation of the Chihuahua District Representative uh, accepted. There was some some thought given at your October, I guess, eighth board of supervisor meeting. Uh, and, I, and I think at that meeting there was actually a, an inclusion within your packets that identified the state codes and the processes involved in that. Um, as a quick recap, I think, as I recall, there were, there were actually two names brought forward. Uh, there were five members of the Board of Supervisors present at that meeting, and ultimately a, an interim uh, member was appointed that, that night. Uh, he is in attendance today, Mr. Wade Blevins. So along with that, uh, the discussion became as to when a special election will be set to uh, provide the, the residents of Chilhowee to have an opportunity to uh, consider and elect a, a new supervisor member. Um, I know, and I, I know, I know Ms. Ellswick's here, but again, the column kind of blocks my view back there. Ms. Ellswick and Mr. Campbell, our attorney, I know they've had communication. I've had communication with, with each of those individuals. Um, there were some dates, and, and Ms. Ellswick, if it's okay, and I hate talking around the column to you, but if it's okay, I'd, I'd like to read at least the dates that you have submitted. Um, Ms. Ellswick was gracious enough to send uh, some, some uh, possibilities of dates for such special election. Um, and this is in the email dated October 17th because that's, that's the communication that we had. At that point in time, uh, after review of, of all, and, and that's what I'll ask her to talk about is the, the time frames in between the, the elections and the processes that go with it. Um, at that time, there was a potential for a December 17th uh, election, a January 7th election, and then if neither one of those were, were uh, I guess, decided, uh, the next time frame would be uh, somewhere uh, because, and let me just read the email. Uh, there's a Democratic presidential primary on March 3rd. Town elections are on May 5th. And if you recall, one of the meetings we actually talked about uh, trying to coincide it with the town elections, and, and that's not a possibility. There's also a primary scheduled but not called for June 9th. And if the 17th, which now is I understand it, is not a possibility, uh, the next opportunity, well, a uh, window of opportunity, is somewhere between July 7th, 2020, and September 8th of 2020. So that that is as I have been explained. Uh, it is a possibility, but but I'm just reading straight from the. Email. So you you have before you our, our registrar that identifies a January 7th possibility, and if that one is not decided upon then it rolls into the July 7th through September 8th uh, time frame. The only other condition of that, I believe, is it has to be on a Tuesday. So that's what I've been, been presented with. Uh, Ms. Ellswick has been gracious enough to communicate that. I know Mr. Campbell has also looked into it. Um, at this point, I, I'm going to stop talking because I think it's, it's, if you guys have questions for either Ms. Ellswick or Mr. Campbell, they're both here ready, prepared to talk about whatever needs to be talked about. 
Well, I guess what we need to do now is if, if um, I mean, that's, that's what's on the agenda is discussion regarding that, so we need to open the discussion up. I guess if, if there's board members or anybody that has the questions up here that, that need answers to, here's our, our two people to ask them to. With that, that we'll get our, our legal and our um, electoral opinions and, and advice on. So uh, I'll open it up for anybody that has questions to, to go ahead with them. If we, if we vote to do the, the uh, January 7th, what would stop us? No. <laughs> I'll make a motion we go with January 7th. Get done with it. A second. Mr. Got Chairman? It. Yes, sir. Can I uh, make a comment on that, please? Let me Before say we've got a motion and a All second right, on the ahead. table, and then it's up. Is there any more discussion? How's that? Now we go. Right. I, the thing that I thought about this, and it, you know, uh, the people got it. unfortunately, they got to elect somebody else. So they need to me, whether you're running a Democrat or a Republican or an independent, you know, they, it, it's a little bit of thought goes into running for public office because it's hard to find somebody. So, you know, I hate rushing it because I think even if both parties had time, we got November coming up, we got Thanksgiving. You got the holidays. You got December coming up. You got Christmas. Even if you had two people in sitting in line, ready to go, which I know the Republican Party don't. Um, you know, uh, they need time to campaign for the public to meet them, to find out what they think about. Uh, you know, I, I think I think it's uh, rushing it for the public in the Chill High District is. Kind of unfair to them. I would want to thank you. Want to take a little time and, uh, and get it done by July. And try to find a good candidate, a couple of good candidates. I'm gonna have a campaign. January the seventh. I don't know anybody that could get it done by then. As far as, uh, you know, it, it's all about the citizens, uh -huh. of the, the high district, getting the right person to represent them. Uh, actually, it didn't work out this time, so I would think the citizens would want some time to try to find somebody good on both parties. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am? I think uh, I have just the opposite view to Mr. Stevenson. Um, I feel like that we need to take care of this. I think the people show how we have a right to elect their representative. And I think the sooner we can do that, the better. So, um, I think that's a better rationale as far as, I think if we were to actually be able to do a poll of the people in that district, they would want an expeditious way to get this field. And I think that we're remiss if we don't move ahead with it. Chairman, may I? Yes, sir. Well, how do, how do we run as an independent? And I'll tell you, an independent has to get 125 signatures. And you're not going to do that in them two months. If they say independent wants to run, they're just going to be out. Because you've got to get your signs, you've got to get cards, you've got to get your signatures. It takes more than that time. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I think this Truth board has come under criticism. Excuse me? I think this board has come under criticism for some of the actions already, and I think we're just compounding that. And I think we're ignoring the desires of the public. And if that's the way this board goes, I think we have consequences for it. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, I can tell you I normally don't get comments from people from other districts, so I can't really call them constituents because they're not my constituents. All right. Um, but, but I've had several uh, talk about kind of what Mr. Stevenson was saying, um, giving people time to process. Uh, we have the holidays. Coming up, uh, we have a person with over 16 years of experience. Um, we had no one else run, uh, so I, I, I don't Hold it. No, that's not true. We had another choice. No, I, I mean during a normal election. Um, so I, I think people need time to be able to. I mean, it's a big decision to be made. I think they need time to, to make that decision. That's my opinion.
Well, uh, and I'll throw my two cents in too since we're open in discussion. And uh, I, I feel the same way. I think that, that we had a general election already and, and we had two candidates that were on the ticket and and, and I understood one prevailed, excuse me, prevailed over the other one and, uh, and that didn't work out. I don't know what kind of the, the poll numbers were, like what the what the spread was or how many votes were for one candidate over the other, but I do know that there was a lot of support in that in that area and that was somebody that had had previously been on this board. I I, I don't think that we're in a emergency situation on that and I, I I do think that over these holidays that's just gonna be a rush time to get this done. Um, I don't want it to be a shoe man in any kind of way. I just think it ought to be give it ample time. Um, so anyway, um, there's a motion and a second on the floor. So if there's any more discussion, we'll take the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. And one abstention. I'm sorry, I, I meant to vote in favor of the uh, January meeting, uh, election. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know if you'd like any input. I'm certainly not trying to put Mr. Campbell on the spot, but he is your legal, legal counsel as well. I think, I think uh, certainly uh, if you wanted to conduct it on January 7th, you could. That's 55 days exactly prior to March the 3rd. Um, that is the, the, the legal answer to that question. Obviously, there are policy considerations underlying whether you want to conduct it in, a, in the first week in January when snow and ice might be blowing coming off of holidays, whether that's adequate or not for the public. I don't know. That's a policy question. That's not a legal question. Legally, you have every right to conduct it on the 7th of January if you choose to, but you're not required to. Well, the, the, the motion and second were made pretty quick. I know so that we go back into the discussion of we've got Ms. Elswick and, and Mr. Campbell here. If, we, if we've got questions that we want to ask pertaining to that, then I think now's the time to ask those questions. Mr. Chairman, I'm not a four cent in the date. I just want to. You know, uh, I, uh, there's nobody believing the death here. It, it ought to have time to work itself out. There's somebody in the position. I, I get party, one party against the other, and one party wants power. That's not what I'm here, and I'm not worried about criticism. My question to you is, if we if we have it, did you say June after June? July. Uh, July 7th through September 8th is what's, what's in the email. It's the middle of summer. It has to be a... Tuesday. Can it be the first Tuesday or is it a Tuesday? Could it be July the 7th? Yeah. <clears throat> well, then, Mr. Chairman, I'm. Didn't we say it had to be on a Tuesday? Yeah, what did that, no. what the first Tuesday? That is the first Tuesday. It is. I'm sorry, I, I scrolled through to 2022. I'm going to back up a year. So, what's the date? July 7th is the first Tuesday or the second Tuesday of the month. Is that what you were looking at? Yes. I'll make a motion. We set it for the first Tuesday of July. Second Tuesday, second July. Tuesday of July. That's the first Tuesday. Uh, That's the first Tuesday. The 7th is the first Tuesday. And we set it on the 7th, Sandy. 17th, no. That's the first Tuesday in July. It just has to be on the Tuesday. It doesn't have right. to be on the second Tuesday. Okay. So it, well, that's so going to be right after the 4th of July. And people may have been out of town for trips. And, you know, within, it could snow in the winter months. And right. well, holidays and just, I'll, I'll, no, I just think that our excuses are very poor. You've made that very plain. I, I, I get it all. I get Mr. Morgan's gesture there. I get it all. But I'm entitled to my opinion and my motion, too. Do you get it? So is the 14th okay? So I make a motion to sit. I'm not trying to prolong this at all. But, but just so you know, your board meeting is July 14th. That may or may not matter. But 
Ms. Ellswick, did, does that interfere with precincts or anything of that matter? No, there'll be only two precincts. She'll have them in the same place. I just want to clear that up. It shouldn't interfere with us whatsoever. And I'll make a motion that the special election to fill the seat in the Chell High District is July the 14th. I'll second that. There's a motion and a second on the table. Is there any more discussion on this? Discussion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would just like to go on record as saying I feel like this is very contrived by members of this board. I feel like that there's a responsibility and accountability to the people of Chilhalli, and I hope they will take note of it. Duly noted. I'd like, I'd like to agree with her on that. I think we're doing the citizens of Chihuahua an injustice by, by postponing it. Plus, there are important decisions that will be made between January and July. A budget will be formed during that time. There's some very impacting things, and I hope there's no hidden agendas here in order to prolong it. I'm very uh, conscious about that, and I really do not want to be perceived as a part of that. Uh, so the motion and the second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. One abstention. Committee recommendations, appointment committee. Mr. Rick Blevins. Yes. Um, we had an appointment, appointment committee on October 17th. The discussion in that committee was uh, the resignation of the previous Chilhowee board member and where Mr. Blevins had been appointed. Uh, the recommendation that was unanimous uh, was to appoint Mr. Wade Blevins to fulfill all the committees uh, that Mr. Ray had been assigned to uh, for the length of his term. And, and that was a unanimous recommendation. That's a recommendation from the appointment committee. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? <clears throat> One okay. Budget committee. Uh, budget committee met, and uh, with the upcoming uh, 2020 reassessment, there's a need for a clerical position to handle day-to-day -day duties. The individual will be located within the courthouse and will work with the Commissioner of Revenue's office in addition to the Board of Assessors and the Board of Equalization. Uh, in the past, the county has used a temp agency due to the position being part-time or temporary. And so after that discussion, it's a recommendation from the Budget Committee to use the temp agency to, for a clerical position and set the pay for $10 an hour. And that is the committee's recommendation. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Okay. One abstention. Atkins District EDA appointment. Mr. Atkins? Yeah, I want to appoint Marvin Craig back to the EDA board. He said he would serve again. Second. Uh, motion to point Marvin Craig back to the EDA board. How long is that? Four, four years? Five? Four years? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, when does his term expire? I mean, is, it, is he already out? Or, I mean, what's this? Okay. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Supervisor Service Award, Michael Carter. Sure, if it's okay, I'd like to come down front. Uh, you want to state your name and address for the record? Uh, I'd be glad to. I'm Michael Carter, 240 Robinson. I don't know if that. So that's where I'm at. So I have to kind of do this a little differently. And I'll have to, have to take and see what's where. But um, a week ago, <coughs> I'm an active member in Baco. And I know some of our supervisors have been also. 
And we, we go to Baco conferences, and every so often, I think I'm live enough anyway, every so often uh, when you're at a Baco conference, they do a recognition, basically, of your service. And they have milestones, is what they call those things. So uh, it, it, I've been in the last four to five years, and I've heard names called out, and sometimes you scratch your head because you think, how did they get that? So out of the blue, about a week ago, I get this very nice um, thing from Baco. And it's, it's written on it. It says, do not be in an uh, important document. All this good stuff. So I open it. And when I open it, I am delighted and surprised because of the whole time, you know, I've been the county administrator here over 10 years. And this is the first time that I've ever seen one of our supervisors receive an award for being a supervisor. Now, I know, Mr. Blevins, you, you attended those training sessions and, and you were a certified supervisor and you got recognized accordingly. And that's, that's great. Now, they go now, they do different things. And one of the things they do is they do uh, basically 10 and 15 and 20 year recognitions. Now, the 15 is going away. So it's basically if you're, if you're a supervisor and you've held that office for 10 years, then they're going to recognize you. And then, if you're a supervisor and you hold that office for 20 years, you're going to be recognized again. So when I received something out of the mail, you know, just out of blue the other day, I got one of those. I got a recognition. And I'll be glad to read it. Um, it says, the Virginia Association of Counties Supervisor Service Award. It says, VACO recognizes Roscoe Cobb from Smith County. On November of 2019, and, and I don't I don't pretend to, to say that I contributed the dates, they keep those dates. So if the dates are off or on, that's how VACO records are kept. For 10 years of dedicated service to county government. So on one hand, and I'm gonna prop it up because I have more, but I have a, a plaque there recognizing Mr. Roscoe Cobb. So as I get that flag, I'm thinking, where's the other ones at? Because we've had some other members that have reached that 10 year plateau. So I called up Baco. And I said, hey guys, I am very appreciative of what you guys have done. You've recognized Mr. Kyle. You're fantastic. However, I think we've missed a couple. So I go back and I relay some, some information. And sure enough, we have two other members. And, and ironically enough, they're both sitting here with Mr. Colin Knight that I'd like to read also. And they have different dates, and I don't know if it makes you feel older or younger. But uh, the second one is the Virginia Association of County Supervisor Service Award. Baco congratulates Mr. Todd Desher from Smith County. And they claim on November 10, 2013, for 10 years of dedicated service to local government. And if you look at it, it's really official because what they did, you'll notice on, on Mr. Collins, it's signed by the current VACO president, Mr. Tim Reeves, from Wick County. Well, Mr. Dishner, they went back to your date. They got James Campbell to sign it, so they're all thin. It's not like... Uh, they just got whoever they're doing. So that's an authentic reproduction right there. Six years later. Well, <laughs> I have one more. And, you know, this individual, you know, when I get to asking questions, they start asking. And as I identify, you know, the, the nice young lady, Valerie Russell, is the lady for Vaco. Fantastic lady. She would do anything to help anyone. So when we got to talking about the other one that had 10 years service, sure enough, we got one. Again, the Virginia Association of County Supervisor Service Award of Baco congratulates Mr. Blake Blevins from Smith County, and again, 
I didn't test it these days. This is what was on their file. November 10, 2013, 10 years of dedicated service. Once again, son of Mr. Jim Campbell, who was the president at that time. And I did not drop it. That is cat like reflexes right there. Okay. So, I stand before you tonight. Oh, yeah, I see that. With a good, wholehearted thank you for you guys for the service you put in on behalf of ACO. On behalf of your constituents, on behalf of your board mates, on behalf of those in the room and those in far, recognizing that you guys have committed 10 years of your life and more now, but that's your recognition award. And I don't know that it's appropriate for me to actually present the shape, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask your vice chairman. To do that. Yes, sir. Because, unfortunately, you're a recipient. Okay. <laughs> so, I can make a speech, but I would like Mr. Blue to make that presentation to Vice Chair. Very good, very good. Give him a hand. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You've done a great job. Thank you. Mr. Wade Blevins, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You dropped the check out of the back of this thing. Uh, they're all in one envelope. Okay. <laughs> so what, what I would also like to ask, if it's not too big, Ms. Would you mind at the conclusion maybe a good picture of that? Absolutely. Thank you very much. She's good at pictures. And that, that concludes the ceremony, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. May I get in on that? Sure. I, I'm going to thank you all personally. Ten years sitting on this chair giving service, that's, that's, that's pretty good. So uh, thank you, Wade. Oscar, Todd, thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, well, we don't have supervisor comment time, but I, I would like to say a little bit. I I, uh, I do appreciate that recognition and, and fellow board members, and we've got some that's coming close to the ten year, the ten year spot. So, uh, Roscoe, is it how many years for you, actual? Yeah. Yeah. 11? Yeah. Getting ready to finish your 12. 12. Yes. Yeah. Right. Getting ready to finish. Right. Wade, I know you were on 16. Yeah. Here you are sitting again. And I've, I've been on my 16th. And, that, and uh, I've enjoyed this. I've, in, I've enjoyed the, the challenge of it. I've enjoyed getting to know what makes Smith County tick. And um, I know a lot of times we... We get saddled with a lot of hard decisions and, and um, ruffle feathers and whatnot, and I've enjoyed this. And I, I, I can say that I've every decision, I've, I have never had an agenda being up here. And, and, and I voted what I thought was the best, and I would listen to people, and, and I tell you, the people in our communities voted us in to make those decisions. So... I've never listened to the five loud ones, you know. I mean, it's never been that the squeaky wheel. I know they always say the squeaky wheel gets the grease, but um, I, I took oath for this office to to make the right decisions and and to represent the people in my district and and not just my district, but Smith County as a whole. I mean, I we make votes up here that affect Roscoe's end or Miss Wyatt's end or all over this the county. So. Um, but I've done that with a clear conscience, and and um, and I'm I'd still say that, and I feel that, and I the decisions that I've made and the votes that I've made, I've always said if they made sense to me, if I could tell somebody my side of the story, it should make sense to you because it's it's not rocket science, and 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 uh, just because they're hard to make or or they're happy ones to make, um, I've made them with a with a clear conscience, and and. Uh, um, we get beat up from time to time, but I, I'll stand behind what I've done up here. And, and uh, 
I, I know I've been I'm up for election again this year, and and if if that's been satisfying the people in my district and they stand behind that, then we'll see what happens in November. But um, I do know I was absent at our last board meeting. Um, I actually have had a career change in in my life, and um, I'm excited about. And and I was in in new training, um, so I wasn't here for that one. And and I sure don't want it to look like that I skipped out so I wouldn't have my say or my vote. So. Uh, um, I agree with the decision that was made, and I agree with the decision that was made tonight. And I'm, and it, I, I've heard this been said up here a hundred times, or not up here. Well, sometimes up here that this is a good old boys club, or this is a this, or this is a that. Guys, I'm telling you, just like I said before, every decision I've made, I can live with, and I feel like I, I can defend. I haven't done it for any other kind of underhanded kind of decision or to. To award one over the other, it's been as fair, and I've lost friendships over it, and I've gained friendships over it, and and uh, but I'll stand behind it, and and Wade, I support that that you were put back up here as a supervisor, and, and I appreciate that you agreed to do that, and had 16 years of representing your people, and and you don't you don't get reelected uh, four different times in a row if if you weren't doing what you were supposed to, and I've never serving with you, I've never seen you have a hidden agenda. I've never seen you do things for for spite. I've always respected that you've had the same outlook that, that I aspire to, to do is to listen to both sides of the story and make the right the right courteous and the logical decision. So um, I would have voted in voted in the affirmative had I been sitting here. Um, all right, I'm not gonna get too windy. I just I just wanted to say a, a little bit. So um, I hope that we can continue on and propel Smith County in the right direction that we need to. So uh, I know it wasn't service supervisor time, but I look if anybody's got anything else to say, I'm open to hear any comments before we adjourn. I want to thank Wade for stepping up. You know, I, I've served 16 years here. I, I would have had to reach pretty deep to come back and fill a spot. That, like he did, and tells me a whole lot about the money. So I appreciate you, Wade. You know, when I was in, when I was doing my training, I was in Nashville for a week, and and um, I think there's 11 sales members on the team that I'm on, and and we were introduced to the other the other members of the team, and. When he introduced me, that was one of the things he said. He said, one thing that impressed me about Mr. Dishner, he said he had been elected four different times to represent his county. And he said, I don't think there's one of us sitting in the room that could have done that. So he said that impressed me. So uh, um, I'm not bragging about that, but I appreciate the respect that I've gotten from that. So uh, anyway. I need to go, Mr. Chairman. All right. Anybody else before we adjourn? If that's it, we will. We, what is our next meeting date? Uh, the, the November 13th. It's on Wednesday due to the Bay Conference. Okay. See everybody then.